the opportunity to meet uh, these wonderful families, uh, strong, strong families who um, can take adversity on and just go forward with uh, positive attitudes and, uh, and loving attitudes. Uh, that has been uh, really uh, an opportunity that I uh, am grateful to have had. Luck counts for a lot. That's my first thought. I've been fortunate uh, along the way to have uh, stumbled into this involvement uh, with Angelman Syndrome. And um, yes, I brought some talents to the table. Dr. Charles Williams is a huge part of the Angelman Syndrome story. It all started in 1965 when Dr. Harry Angelman published a paper describing unrelated individuals that had severe intellectual disability, a lack of speech, and a happy demeanor, among other things. But that article sat dormant for nearly 20 years until Williams arrived. I was a, a young clinical geneticist just starting out at the University of Florida. Well, the first individual I ever saw with Angelman syndrome was an adult who lived at Sunland Training Center, which was a large uh, institution for the intellectually disabled, and I was the medical director there. Uh, this was a long time ago. I was 29 years old. Williams identified several others at the institution that had the same traits as those that were described in that 1965 article. I contacted Harry Angelman with the idea of having him involved in our efforts. In 1982, Williams submitted a paper making the case that the syndrome was much more common than previously thought. He proposed the disorder be now called Angelman syndrome, or AS. Had it not been for the work of Dr. Williams, it is hard to say where we would be with Angelman syndrome. He was at the forefront of it all. At the forefront of the diagnosis by helping to set guidelines for it, as well as helping to better understand the syndrome. Throughout uh, these decades of this changing landscape, um, I, was, uh, I was challenged to try and keep up with it. So the landscape was changing and it was a challenge for me as a clinical person to keep up with the basic science and the molecular changes, but this was uh, very important to my development. In the late 1980s, in addition to seeing patients, his office also served as a research hub and his staff created and ran a nonprofit organization to provide education and support for families. Dr. Williams was instrumental in founding the Angelman Syndrome Foundation and his contributions to our knowledge of Angelman Syndrome is unprecedented and monumental. I was just thrilled for Charlie to have found something um, that he could really put his mark on. And uh, he, of course, is very um, humble, I guess, about a lot of it. Dr. Williams also inspires others, too. I just took this off the wall because this has been on my wall for many, many years. I actually had to make a fresh print because uh, it was faded uh, really uh, a lot. Um, but this for me was very special, Charles, when you came here uh, to uh, give a talk. I approached you and I was very nervous because I saw you as the godfather for human research and, and clinics. Uh, and all my worries really just disappeared in one minute because you were very approachable, very nice to me, and made me feel at ease at the meeting. Dr. Williams has given to researchers, families, and science, but that's not how he sees it. I feel that Angelman in that way has given much more to me as a scientist, a pediatrician, and clinical geneticist than, than I've given to Angelman Syndrome. So it's been a love-love relationship in, in, in a way, and I feel very fortunate to I know the families with Angelman syndrome and to be involved in the scientific community as it's evolved to deal with all the phenomenal questions and challenges that uh, Angelman syndrome has brought forth.